What's going on? What's up? Good morning. Jacob, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you all for having me. It's, it's fun to be here. Now, your album comes out this Friday. It's, it's called Friday. Connection. Yo, no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> um, yeah, it's tell a... Me, yeah, tell me about the process of making that album, and uh, and it seems like it was a long time coming. You've made a lot of music over the past couple of years, right? Yeah, I've, I've started out doing music. Music was my first love. Um, my, my dad and my uncles sing every day. They sing right now. They're probably singing while we're speaking right now. But um, my cousin Kenny Lattimore has been doing R&B music for, for years. Um, music just always been in my family, and I think it's just something I always loved. And uh, this is my very first album. I, I was signed to a record company for a few years, and like now it's, everything was like super political. Like You can't put it out right now because of this or that. But now I'm independent, and now it's just me and the fans. It's nothing, it's just simple, and I'm excited about it. Yeah, so talk to me about some of the themes uh, on this record. Just what was the process like in terms of sitting down and, and putting some of these songs together? Uh, creating an album is, is, it can be a little stressful. I mean, you don't really know which direction you want to go because I've given my fans so many different Jacob Lattimore's. Like, you know, I put out this record called Heartbreak Heard Around the World, which was a little bit more pop. And, um, and then, like, well, I started out doing real, real R&B music. So I said, if this is going to be my first album, and you know, I got my urban fan base, my, my core fan base. I just gotta make this album as urban as possible, but still keep the substance and uh, stay trendy, but still stay longevity with it, with the music as well, because we live in a, you know, music just so trendy now. You know, it's like a sound and a new sound the next month. So um, I try to stay consistent with that. Are there any collaborations that you are really excited about? Uh, this album just really me. This just album, Ishtar is the only. Uh, other um, feature on the project. I mean, if any remixes come out of it, then that'd be dope. But I think I really just wanted. To, I still got some. I feel like I still got something to prove in myself. So um, this album is really just me, and uh, so I think that's why it's called Connection. I'm really making the connection with myself, my fans, and the future fans. So take us back a little bit. You mentioned that you come from a very musical family. Um, you actually had your first single come out when you were nine years old, right? Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was called Best Friend. Yeah, you were my best friend. Thought you'd always be my best friend. It was real, you know. It was, it was cute. It was real cute. <laughs> and so then, uh, how did you make this the shift from R and B? I mean, is that something that you eventually kind of want to go back to, or is that sort of just gauging what the appetite is out there for the the kind of music that people are listening to? Well, I always I always just really stick to R and B music. I mean, my dad and my uncles were in an R and B group called Jersey Yeah. They were signed to MCA. They're doing gospel music now, but I, I've always been around that R and B soulful, even a little bit of church kind of feel. So it's just um. Um, I think for me, I knew that I couldn't just do R&B music. I knew I knew I can do other things, but with this album, a majority of it is um, urban. Majority of it is R&B, but I, I do have a couple of records on there to show you that I can uh, cross over and do other things. So yeah. Now you are certainly a triple threat. You can really dance. You can act. You can do it all. Um, just in thinking about your career, are there other artists that you look up to um, and you think like, oh, that could be a possible model for me as well? Uh, Bruno Mars is my favorite artist right now, all time, right now. Um, Chris Brown, Michael Jackson, I think I speak for every artist when I say that. I mean, who can't mention Michael in uh, any of their conversations? So um, my grandfather had me on the Temptations movie when I was like, maybe like 11, or no, I was a little younger than that. I was about eight, seven, seven or eight years old, and I was just watching that DVD or TV series like every day, every day. And... Uh, B2K was one of my favorite groups growing up. So I was like, <laughs> I was watching their dance moves. I would literally be in my room cutting off the sleeves on the t shirt, wearing the bandanas, and like in front of the poster, like, you know, just like I was in the group or something. <laughs> um, it was, uh, I was that inspired as a kid. And uh, that with my family too. So it was just, it was all around me. So when it came to training, I mean, did you take any kind of formal uh, voice lessons or, yeah, and, and same with the dancing? I mean, Based on your dance move, there's no way that you just learned from dancing in your room and I looking promise, in the mirror. <laughs> I promise. I mean, like that's and that's how it is. You kind of use what you got. You just use the use what's around you. I mean, I, I went into to classes to like learn different choreography and get familiar with choreography. But when it came to just raw freestyle dancing, I was just being around other dancers and and learning from them. Um, it was all in my environment, who I wanted to surround myself around, and that's what I learned from. And you were telling me that you just performed this past weekend uh, at the Apollo, right? 
Yeah, a friend of mine, her, her name is Soraya. She's off the uh, show Empire. She called me. Um, she was like, hey, I want you to come do this Christmas song with me. I'm, I'm hosting this amateur night thing. And, uh, yeah, it was just fun for us to do. We um, we always talk and have a little good conversation. So I just, uh, it was it was dope for us to kind of collab on. Uh, we, we sung This Christmas. That's what we sung. Yeah. Such, a, such a fave of so many people. Um, is it hard to switch gears between doing uh, the acting and the singing and when you're going from, like, making a video to then performing in front of a live audience? Um, not necessarily. I mean, um, a music video and, like, Filming a movie is, I mean, it's different, but it's all emotion. It's all, it's all sort of kind of diving into a role. You know what I mean? You always kind of, when you do music, you kind of dive into yourself a little more, and you try to figure out who you are. And um, when you do a film, you you kind of imagine what someone else is going through, and you see how you can relate uh, to that character. And um, that's how you do when you hop in the studio. Like when I hop into a studio with a with a song like The Real, you know, you can hear that. You can. Tr I, I want people to hear that I'm an entertainer, you know, uh, and even in the vocals, without you even seeing the video. You want to hear that I'm an entertainer. You want to hear that I'm a dancer, and that's what, that's what, uh, that's what it's all is. It's all emotion. It's all trying to uh, present something. Besides the real, are there any other songs that you're really looking forward to coming out? Yeah, uh, this this song called Love Drug. I'm really excited about. Um, Mutual uh, is out right now. Uh, this probably I think that's one of my fan favorites right now. Um, it's a, it's it's a, it's a solid body. I mean, I've I've been pushing the album back all year because I've been I did three films this year, so that's like the hard part between um, filming and music that the scheduling is crazy. Because when you do a movie, you're gone out out of the world for like two three months. You know, you're kind of out of sync with what's going on on social media because you can't really post what you're wearing because you gotta save it for the movie. You gotta save it for the trailer. You know, so it's like. You, that's probably the hard part. So, like, this is the perfect time to release the album around Collateral Beauty. I'm excited about. Yeah, and uh, we actually we can take a look at uh, a clip from Collateral Beauty, and Ooh. then I, I want to hear all about it. Ooh. Was it the holidays? Uh, no, it wasn't that. Well, then why you decide to come in tonight? Um, I'm trying to fix my mind. Howard is a brilliant man. And he's not just a boss, he's a friend. He lost his child, and now he doesn't care if he loses everything else. This might be the strangest thing I have ever come across. He writes letters. Who are they to? Howard doesn't write letters to people. He writes to things. Time. Love. Death. Kids write letters to Santa Claus. It doesn't mean they're crazy. No, this is therapeutic. You're gonna think I'm crazy, but I'm having conversations. Death came first. She met me in the dog park. Charmed, I'm sure. So death is a her. Turns out death is an elderly white woman. Remember me? I'm time. You wrote me because you need me. Howard? Ask her. Go ahead, ask her if she can see me. He was sitting right here. And he just appeared, right? I'm love and I'm the fabric of life. Something's starting to happen to you. Howard? I don't know what to do to bring you back. What if love, death, and time are trying to help you? You need to talk to them, Howard. Challenge them. Just engage. Love is the reason for everything. I felt you every day when she laughed and you broke my heart. I was there in her love, but I'm also here now in your pain. He's reaching out to the cosmos for answers. Just be sure to notice the collateral beauty. It's the profound connection to everything. If he accepts that, maybe he gets to find his life again. You're not here to take me, are you? No, Howard. I'm here to ride the F train with you. Let's love tonight. Okay, so this movie looks just so emotional and also an incredible cast as well. Um, but you play actually a concept of time, not necessarily a person. 
What is that? Yeah, I was like, Tom is a little black kid with <laughs> Timberlands and a gray hoodie. All right, let's go. No, but um, uh, it was um. At first, I thought about it way too hard. I was like, do I wear a clock around my neck or something like that? But uh. I think for me, um, what, what Rafi, my character Rafi represents with time is that time is important. What we do in this moment is uh, absolutely important. Love is, one of the lines in the movie is, love is creation, love is the beginning, and death is destruction or the new beginning, the threshold that we all have to meet. And time is that, that bridge that connects, connects it all. And um, I think uh, what Rafi was trying to explain, that time doesn't slow down for anyone. You can't go back and say, hey, hey, Tom, can I go redo that? I want to go spend more time with that person. I didn't, time won't care. Time doesn't have any red lights or, or yellow lights. It will keep going, and we have to deal with things and live in that moment. So it's harsh, huh? Yeah. Yeah, time. Time is, time is a little... Little thug in the movie. <laughs> okay. but, uh, but how does time uh, help Will Smith's character? Um, I think uh, you know basically what, what what I said. I think um, with uh, with Rafi, he's explaining that there's a lot to do in a day. You know, um, we see we see uh, Howard's character, Will Smith's character, um, building dominoes, spending a lot of time just just doing a lot of really nothing. You know what I mean? And uh, I think. With with time, you can't spend too. You can't stay too stagnant for too long. You have to deal with things, open your heart up, deal with that pain, and keep living because time, time. Like I said, time will keep going, and time won't slow down for you. So that's what Rafi represents, and I think that's what uh, we install in the Howard in the film with with love, even with love, death, love and death. So. Mm -hmm. How is it to work with Will Smith? Incredible. I mean, he's like literally the greatest guy ever. I mean. I don't think, I mean, he's definitely one of a kind. I mean, he gives so much of himself for his craft and the people, his supporters and his fans. And I was, we were, we filmed here in New York for about two months and we were outside and, you know, we'll always bring a crowd. So like we're behind it, like there's maybe like 200 people behind the camera while we're doing the scene outside. And literally when they say cut, they'll start clapping. Like we were like doing like a live theater street play or something. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, how do you deal with this? Like, and they would say cut. They would rush him. They would take photos, and he would smile and not complain about a thing, which was refreshing to see. I was like, wow. I mean, he'd take everything and handle it so well. And I asked him, I was like, how do you deal with all of this? I mean, this is a lot. He said uh, his whole perception changed when he met uh, Nelson Mandela and Muhammad Ali. They're some of the most famous people in the world, you know? And he was saying, that I have to, people have to know that I'm real. People have to know that I'm human. And he said, I have to smile. I have to, I have to go out there and touch the people to let them know that I'm flesh. It's because they keep seeing me on TV. They think of me as an idea. And I'm like, we'll just drop knowledge <laughs> on me, yo. I'm just like, it was, it was, it was dope. It was just it's dope to see like he's a he's a real person. He's a real um he breaks the ice with you very, very fast. He makes you feel like your family and um he makes you feel very comfortable, which was uh Dope to see someone at the top that genuine. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's someone who's also had a really long career. He's really, he has longevity. He's so multi-talented, which is, in some ways, there, I think there are some parallels between also since you're a triple threat yourself. Um, as a young actor, I mean, how do you deal with, I guess, some of the pressure and uh, just living life in the public eye, especially since you have, since you were so young? Um, I think for me, it's just kind of like keeping your circle tight and, Keeping positive energy around you. I mean, it's difficult. I mean, sometimes I even take I even take my time off social media just to kind of get away from it for a couple of days. And you gotta you gotta give yourself time. You gotta give yourself those moments to like live. You know what I mean? Because we you can get really caught up into what people are saying and you know the critics and all that stuff. So I think it's just uh you just gotta keep positive energy around you and um, the, the good spirits. So yeah, it helps. Um, you have some other projects also coming out next year. Um, there's Slight, where you're kind of a card expert magician. Um, you just finished a project on the Detroit riots, and then there, you're in another independent film called Crystal, right? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, right after Collateral, I did two other films with the Crystal film with uh, William H. Macy from Shameless, and he was incredible to work with. So I think I fell in love with film in a whole new way this year just by working with working with this cast and working with William H. Macy until working with a, a director like Catherine Bigelow 
on her Untitled Detroit Project, which is a film based around the 1967 Detroit riots. And, um, you know, we would had texturized hair, wearing old school clothes. I can't really get into the depths of my character because she's she probably called me herself. She's very, very private. Like, I didn't get the script till I got to set. That's odd. Like, with Collateral, I had the script maybe a month before we started filming. So I got familiar with the size, familiar with the scenes. You know, Catherine, she was like, this is your character. And I'm just like, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. And, like, we're filming, like, the next two days. So, she, But she likes to get that natural reaction out of people on, on screen, and it works. And she just got her own way of doing things. Mm. Yeah, and then Slight, I'm excited about that. Um, filmed that, actually, in the last year. Uh, got picked up at Sundance by WWE Studios, and... Um, we're excited about it. We're excited about it. It's a, it's a really cool movie. Interesting, like, um, realistic hero. Bo plays. He's a he's a magician, but he also dives into the drug dealing world, which kind of helps him in the drug dealing world in a way. And he sees how dark that world is, so he uses his uh, obsession with magic, his um, obsession with magic to uh, deal with those problems. And um, he sort of turns into a superhero, it looks like. And yeah. did you have to learn any magic tricks to be able to do I that? I tried to learn in like a good, <laughs> good solid month. When I met the cardistry guys and the magicians, they, they've been mastering this for 10 years, as long as I've been acting. Like, so I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> All right. And they're like moving their fingers in weird ways. I'm just trying to make sure I hold the, hold the, the deck of cards right, make it look like I know possibly how to make a card disappear into thin air. And then I let the uh, stunt doubles do their thing. <laughs> no, okay. They can handle the rest. Yeah, they do. They do just put the camera down, and I look up, and I'm like, yay, you know. So you mentioned you like to take some time away from social media, but you also have this amazing fan base on social media. How do you decide what parts of your life that you want to post and show everyone? Um, I'm not sure. I think it's <laughs> like, it's like I, I think about it a lot. Like, hmm, should I post this? Mm, I think we all got the moments. Like, that selfie just ain't the right angle, you know? I think we could get a better angle of that selfie, you know, because, you know, they meme you out here. They screenshot you. It's crazy. People are so harsh, people are so mean. It's wild. Do you get a, a lot of your fans um, following you around just from show to show when you're going to perform as well? Uh, yeah, when I'm, when I'm on the road, on the road. I haven't really got, got a chance to be truly on the road um, in a while, but this will be the first time I'm actually performing uh, this Wednesday at the Brooklyn, New York, uh, Apple Store, Williamsburg, so I'm excited about that. And just, um, yeah, just getting in there and performing and, like, hitting the stage again because I've been doing so much filming. Yeah. Is the connection different when you do get to be in a room with a lot of your fans and uh, interacting with them on stage versus, you know, spending time in your trailer alone and then being on, like, a closed set? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, nothing like that, that energy with you and the fans. That, that's when you know it's real. You can see it on Twitter and be like, are oh, they really loving it or they love it? And then when you see them in person, it's just and you hear the screams and you hear the you hear the support. That's ain't nothing like it. That's when you know it's real and that's when you know you're you're doing your job right. All right. Well I know that we have some fans in the audience with some questions for you. What up, Liz? What up? So who has a question for Jacob? Hi. How nice, you doing? Good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Um, I wanted to say I really love the movie Black Nativity. It's one of my favorite Christmas movies, wow, especially you. to see you in. Um, so I was wondering, compared to that and the, your movie Collateral Beauty, what was the most exciting part about being a part of these projects, and what was the part that you were most nervous about with your character and everything? Um, I think in the beginning with um, with Black Nativity, that was like my first time really uh, dealing with some A-list actors with Forrest Whitaker and Angela Bassett. I think that was... I was a little nerve-wracking to make sure, because I was carrying that film, you know. With Will, he's carrying this film. So I, I, I work here and there. But I, on, on Black Nativity, I work every day. So the lines were super, super, super important for me to memorize and make sure I was able to stay on my toes and change things on the, on the drop of a dime with, with Forrest Whitaker behind the camera waiting for his turn, you know. So, um, But nothing was too nerve-wracking about it. I just knew I had to be prepared and... Um, I think filming both movies in New York was uh, one of the best ideas. Like those holiday films in New York is just something about it. Something about New York around Christmas time, we can't really explain it. It's just magical. I mean, the, the iconic bridges, the skyscrapers, it's, just, it's the perfect place for a Christmas movie or a holiday film. So, um, And then working with these guys or these, these incredible people, it's, a, it's, it's dope. 
Do you have another question? Hi. Um, I wanted to know when it comes to acting, who's like your biggest inspiration? Biggest inspiration when it comes to film. Oh, I mean, I mean, Will was Will was definitely one of those guys. I met him like I'm just like, yo, he's glowing. Like this dude's glowing. Yo, I'm like, and he's when I first met him, he started dancing. He's like, I see your little dance moves on YouTube, you know. Like I, I we gonna we gonna get at that in a minute. So um definitely Will. I love Denzel, Shia LaBeouf. Um uh, I always love watching great TV, the Cosby Show, um, and I think that kind of helped me accidentally in the film world. I never really took intense acting training. It was always me watching great films, and Home Alone was one of my favorite movies as a kid. And you know, even watching the movies like Temptations, I, even though I was inspired by the music, I was also inspired by how well the characters were diving into the roles and the acting and stuff. So um, I just always love watching movies. I love watching movies to this day. I think we have time for one more question. Hello. I just wanted to know, do you have like a playlist that you listen to to get ready for certain roles? Um, certain roles. Actually, I don't. When it comes to the music more so, but when it comes to the film, I can sort of listen to anything and kind of stay into it. I mean, um, with the with the last film I did, the Catherine Bigelow Project, where we were more 1960s, vibes i try to listen to more music at that time to kind of like feel like i was in that environment or um but for the most part i never really had a certain playlist for for a role um but then again if a role that some sometimes actors go into like the method acting and like they have to kind of change their environment completely they got to change the way they dress and change the music they listen to i haven't really um experienced a role like that where i have to be so left field where i have to like kind of really get out of myself until I have to change my environment. I never really had to do like a whole method acting uh, process yet. Probably coming soon, so. <laughs> so uh, when can folks see uh, your movie and where can get, they get your album? Um, December 9th, uh, the album Connection releases exclusively on Apple Music. And December 16th, that's when it'll go to Spotify, Tidal, and all the other platforms. And then uh, that day, uh, Collateral Beauty will be hitting theaters. So I'm excited about it. Just, I think it's a good rollout. I'm excited about it. It's been crazy. Um, been playing it all year. So I'm excited about it. Thank you. Yeah, go get it, please. <laughs> well, congratulations on all your projects. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.